Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will show you all the things I got on my desk and how they boost both my productivity at work and gaming experience. I will first start with the hardware. At the heart of my setup, there is two computers. The first computer is a 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. I'm a data scientist and this MacBook is given to me by the company that I currently work for. I only use this for work and it's really convenient at it and I love using this MacBook. And for my personal use, like personal projects, YouTube or gaming, I prefer to use Windows PC and I love building the PC myself and here is the specs that I gone for. This system is a mid-tier system in two generations back. It has the NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super as a GPU and Ryzen 5 5600X as a CPU. I previously had Ryzen 2600 there on the same Tomahawk Max B450 motherboard from MSI. With the CPU upgrade, I also upgraded the RAM to 2GB of 8GB 3600Hz memory. Overall, I'm really happy with the system and at 1080p, it's still going strong. If you are interested in this kind of a mid-tier system, I will link the parts in the description down below with the modern replacements as well. And both these computers, MacBook and Windows PC are connected to the same setup you see behind me using a KVM switch, which I will explain later in this video. And on top of my setup, up, there is two monitors. These monitors look exactly the same. They are 24 inch, they are from LG, but they're actually different in specs. The middle one is 1080p 144Hz IPS panel. The left one is again 1080p and IPS but 75Hz. They both have their legs when I bought them, but I don't prefer to use legs because they make the monitors unstable. So I try to use VESA mounts in all my monitors. I've gone with this VESA mounts that I got from my local tech store. They make the monitor a lot sturdier on the desk and also you gain a lot of space underneath the monitors. Our next stop is the keyboard and mouse. I will start with the keyboards. I love using Mikkel keyboards and I always include it into my desk setup. Prior to my current keyboard, I had Ant Pro 2 brown switches before and I loved that keyboard. Even though it's a budget keyboard, it didn't felt like it and I loved using it. Until one day, the Type-C port decided to break off and when I tried to solder it, I screwed the keyboard up. So I had to buy another keyboard and I searched for the best keyboard that supports Bluetooth and wired connectivity. And I found out that the Keychron is great at this. So the problem is I use MacBook during the day and Windows PC at the night. So I have to find a way to like switch up the keyboards. And I don't want to buy a second keyboard just for this purpose. So I pulled the trigger on Keychron Key2 and I couldn't be happier. Thanks to Bluetooth and wired connectivity of Keychrons and also support for MacBook and Windows, is a really clutch for me and my setup. And I really love using the Keychron for that purpose. I went with the Gathering Pro Red switches and here is how it sounds. For the mouse, I went with the Logitech G Pro Wireless. I didn't buy the super light version because when I'm in the market for this, the default wireless one is on discount, so I went with that. But I'm not doing that much of competitive gaming, so the default version is just fine for me. I love the ergonomic design of this mouse, and if it breaks somehow, I will probably buy it again. And I have my mouse and keyboard on this 90 to 40 centimeter long desk mat. And for gaming purposes, I also have a PS4 controller in my setup to play games like Elden Ring or Witcher 3. So the next step is the headphone and speakers. For the speaker side, I have a budget alternative as Logitech Z120. Around its price, I think it's one of the best speakers that you can find. It's a great alternative if you have white peripherals as I do on your setup. I think the speaker complements them well. If I'm doing stuff that sounds actually important, like editing YouTube videos or gaming, I prefer to use the headphone. My headphone of choice is the Sennheiser HD 58X. This headphone is my first entry to open back headphones. If you are not familiar with open back headphones, they are basically headphones that their speakers are exposed to outside. So they have different characteristics to close back headphones like we generally used to have. And I'm loving it because of that reason. My ears doesn't sweat in these headphones and also can hear myself. As a result, I'm not shouting during the exciting hours of the gaming sessions. But all that quality of sound comes with a drawback. These Sennheisers or similar level of headphones comes with higher impedance values, meaning that you cannot efficiently use them with your smartphones or 
PCs, etc. Even if you give 100% volume on your phone, you will probably get a lesser level of volume that you might be imagined. As a solution, you need to get an amplifier with this kind of headphones. But lucky me, I had the Elgato Wave 3 microphone that also has a great headphone amplifier. I think the amplifier in this microphone is really good. I can bump up the audio to the levels that I'm not even uncomfortable with. And apart from the amplifier side, I'm really happy about this microphone. I mainly bought it for YouTube, but I use it for various different cases in my computer, like gaming or Zoom meetings, etc. Talking about the microphone, I also have to mention the great software that it comes with it. It acts as an audio mixer and also you can add effects or equalizer to your microphone very easily. And all these monitors, keyboard, mouse and microphone are connected to a KVM switch. So when I'm using my MacBook and wanted to switch the Windows PC, I just press a button and all the peripherals like monitor, keyboard, mouse, microphone are just directly passes to the Windows PC. It's an essential for my setup and because of that I made an entire video about explaining this KVM switch. If you're interested you can find the video here. Our next stop is the webcams. I don't have a dedicated webcam in my setup but I prefer to use my phone as the webcam when I needed it. There is an app called Droidcam and you both install it on your phone and on your computer. You launch the app on both of the devices and you can use your phone as a webcam. If I want to go a bit more fancy though I use my Fujifilm X-T3 if I'm using the Fujifilm X-T3 though, I have to go fancy with the lighting as well. And for that purpose, I'm using a light that I made myself. That's actually the main light source in this video and placed in the 45 degree angle. This is with the light is on and this is with the light is off. As you can see, it makes a huge difference. And as a fill lamp, I have also another lamp from IKEA that is located in the left side of my desk. It's here. There is a LED vents smart bulb in it. As you can see, I can control it via an app. I have also a Google Nest Mini and I use it to control the light bulbs with voice commands. Hey Google, change the color of the lamp to blue. Hey Google, change the color of the lamp to white. As you can see, it works flawlessly. And all these accessories that I mentioned throughout this video are placed on top of the IKEA Saljan countertop. It's 186 centimeters long, and it's actually not a desktop, it's a countertop. It's basically made for kitchens, but you can buy it separately from IKEA to place on your desk. And this countertop is placed on two Alex drawers. And there is also 10 centimeter furniture legs in between the Alex and the countertop to give more space and also increase the height of the desk. And also the final thing is the cable management. I think the cable management is the thing that really elevates your setup to a much more cleaner and more aesthetically pleasing stage. So I handled it with this tool from IKEA. It's one of the default ways to handle cable management, but it really works well for my setup. I tried with other alternatives like cable channels or similar stuff, but they are really hard to upgrade anything in your setup. And in that scenario, you have to disassemble and assemble everything from scratch. It really takes too much time. But this tool from IKEA is really easy to set up and really easy to upgrade anything or change anything if you need it so. So this is all from my setup. If you have any further questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. And if you're interested in any of the product that I mentioned throughout this video, all of them will be given in the description down below. If you like this content and want to see more of it, subscribe to this channel and like this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.